Welcome back to the introduction to Kismet. Now, in the last video, we told you that we were going to show you three separate ways to go about creating a countdown from five to zero. And really, we only showed you two. Two? Yeah, two. two. No, 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 no. We only showed them one and a half. <laughs> Come on, think about it. What was the first approach we took? We showed them that they could use the compare and the subtract int. Mm -hmm. And then we showed them that they could create several of those and simply chain them together. But we saw quickly that that resulted in lots of sequence objects. It looked messy, so we simply stopped. That was kind of a half of a method. Oh, we didn't complete okay. the method. Then we used that same approach, but we simplified it by taking the output of the subtract int and turning it around and making sure that that signal ended up being sent back into the compare int, forming a loop. And That's that right. was much cleaner. But you'll notice right now we're using multiple sequence objects to pull this off. We could take this out and put a single sequence object in there and make it much nicer. So before we continue on, as we had planned, with showing you the rest of our sequence network so that we can get the countdown and then the count back up and all that good stuff, everything mm -hmm. in place, we're going to first show you that third method because we don't want to get too far away and let you guys, well, just miss out. Sure. So let's start off by killing out our subtract int and our compare int. We don't need them anymore. And I'm going to right-click and so go much cleaner already. <laughs> We're going to create a new comparison. We'll go down to counter, and I'll create an int counter. And you'll notice this looks very familiar. Looks just like the compare with the exception of the title at the top. That's right. So what I'm going to do is take our log and plug that to the input. We'll take A and plug it into the 5. B will plug into the 0. And the only real difference is that in our properties, we have an increment amount. Mm. This is going to add this value, whatever value is inside this property, to our counter each time it's triggered. Now, we don't want to really add anything. We want to subtract 1. So if you set this to negative 1, you're adding negative 1, which is the same as subtracting away. Now, we still have to create the loop. It's not going to be an internal loop inside of this one sequence object. So we're still going to have to wrap around from A being greater than B all the way back to that logging information. That's right. The problem here, though, is that because we don't have this extra node upon which to put a delay, we have to change the nature of our logic just a little bit. But before I go into how we have to change it, Let's hook, thing, uh, hook everything up the way it was. We'll take our A equals B, and we'll plug that into toggle. We'll take A is greater than B, and we'll run that back around into our loop, and we'll put a delay on it. So a quick one-second delay, and let's give this a quick test. We're okay. going to see a problem. We're definitely going to see a difference, that's for sure. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, Lights one. off. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Wait. And where'd zero go? We don't show zero, and it looks like we're turning off the lights at one, but we're not. We're turning off the light at zero, we're just not logging zero, and we're hitting zero almost instantaneously after we hit one. Let's take a look at why. The information that is being output on the screen, thanks to the log, is delayed information. It is actually running one second behind the pulse that's traveling through our sequence network here. That is why the moment we come in here and hit zero equals zero, and this becomes true and our pulse comes out, we go over here and we toggle, but that one one second ago is finally getting output. That's right. Okay. That's right. So it's a little bit of an offset. Now, we could fix this in a really down and dirty way by taking B and setting its default value to negative one. That would actually uh, fix the whole thing. Yes, indeed. It's kind of down and dirty. No, it's not. But it it works. just makes readability a little different. Five, four, three, two, one, light out. There you Perfect. Go. So now everything's fixed. Now, there's all sorts of ways you could approach this. You could put a second log over here. You could use some different inputs. We're just going to go ahead and leave it like this. Yeah, that could, because that works. Okay. Now, another thing that is very important for sequences is the process of commenting your nodes. That's right. Just so that when somebody comes behind you or yourself, if you're looking at a network that's very complex and you haven't worked on it in a week or two, leaving comments behind can be extremely helpful in getting back up to speed with what you're doing with a bunch of sequence objects and connections at one time. That's right. Unfortunately, every single node that you create inside of Kismet can't have a comment attached to it. Let's start off here with our original event. We can pop down. You'll notice we have an object comment property, and this will take any string we want to put into it. So let's say um, player uses the trigger. 
There we go. And we see this comment at the very top. If we zoom out, it gets kind of small, but you can read that, and that can tell you the purpose of this event. Like our next node here, this is setting our counter, our timer value, all the way back up to five. But if you haven't looked at this in a while, you might have to read all the way through your network to figure out what this is doing here. So it would be a good idea to come in and say, set counter value to five. Or you could say initialize value to five. Or like in, that. initialize counter. Yeah, initialize counter. Because like you might that. change your you might change your mind. It might not be five later. That's right. But it, this does give you a hint as to what this node is here for. Mm -hmm. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting. Uh, I'm not going to worry about commenting this one, but let's comment this log. We're going to say object comment um, send or not send, but send counter value to screen. Excellent. And we'll move out so we can kind of see that a little more. I'll just kind of rearrange some stuff. Now, let's just stop right there for now. Actually, no, I'll go ahead and do the toggle, too. Why not? We'll say... You're just having too much I fun. am. Let's say turn light on off. There we go. So now everything that I really need to be commented is commented. We can follow the flow of the comments and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Let's hide this and let's test things out. Not that anything should have changed, but... but something did change. Something did change. Ooh. What? Every time we log that number, we're sending the string send counter value to screen out to the log. Why is that? Well, by default on a log node, you have B include object comment, which is kind of interesting because you have B object comment to screen and include object comment. There's almost like a catch-22. Both of these need to be off. This one's off by default. This one's on by default. So if you switch off B include object comment, that will disappear as Let's well. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that it did clean up the countdown. Right, and boom. Much Five, better. Four, three, two, one. Boom. There we go. Which does beg the question, why have two properties there that look, well, like they do the same thing? And that's because all of these nodes have the B output object comment to screen. That's right. They, they all came from the same class. That's right. All right, so if we come over to uh, turn light on off, I mean, you might want to come over and say output this particular object comment to the screen so that now if we try this just one last time. That's a very cool way to do debugging without going and throwing a log in. Yeah, it can tell you, you know, what Kismet node has been reached so far in your sequence. And then, boom, right yeah. as we hit zero, turn light on off. So a very handy way to get an idea of how your sequence is flowing and how data is being moved around. Now, that's really everything I wanted to do in this video, which was get you into the, uh, the new form of the countdown sequence and go ahead and give you a quick look at comments. There's one more kind of comment I can throw out there, which will just be a, a little bit handy. You might run into it at some point, and that is a group comment or a mass right, comment. Just group them all real quick as a quick demonstration. All right. We can hold down Control and Alt and drag a marquee selection box, and then if we right-click out here in space, we can do new comment, and we get the new comment text box, and let's say... Uh, current sequence. And we get this gigantic box which wraps around everything so that we can start to organize things into separate boxes. That's right. The moment you start having different triggers in different parts of the level and they're all responsible for triggering doors or this one's triggering a lift and this one's triggering new enemies to spawn in, you're going to want to take these guys and group them into different comment boxes just to make it a lot easier to quickly identify what's going on because this is Kismet. Everything is going to be seen in here. That's right. And you can see that we have several different... Uh, properties that we can change in here. We have a, a fill color so we can color code this entire box. All sorts of little things we can play with. Sure. We're not going to really get into that right now. Let's go ahead and just delete that out because we don't really need it. And that will wrap up this yeah, particular we got video. That, we got that third method out of the way. Excellent. So now we can go ahead and proceed with putting together the rest of our sequence network. Thanks a lot.